So Arneslot's post-game comments are always something which I find quite interesting. His honesty seems very refreshing at the moment. I think it's certainly something which is taking the club forward. The players seem to be reacting really well to the new environment that they're in. And I think his honesty in this particular comment was what made me make, want to make this video. Because obviously I feel very positive post-game after a win. The emotions are riding high. You see there are a couple of deficiencies, but you also know that the club are working on them. But it's also good when a manager can very openly admit or even just speak about these things. And so he said, he was speaking, they were speaking about, you must be delighted with your first win in the Champions League. He said, not many things to be delighted with, apart from both goals, especially the second one. Great ball from Virgil, great attack, great run from Trent, good result. But I wouldn't use the word delighted myself. Let's break this down a little bit. The actual phrasing, and then also the fact that this is a guy who can, without having seen any of the replays, just go, great ball, great attack, remember the Trent run, and speak about, obviously, Mo Salah's finish. That in itself shows that he is the analytical mind as a manager, someone who retains these moments from the game, notes them down in either mentally or physically, and then takes them back to the players and instantly is reflecting on those kind of things, trying to work out where these weaknesses are. And you can see that's a big influence on the way that Liverpool play right now. A big criticism at the moment is that Liverpool aren't controlling games enough. But, and this is the thing that fine old fans kind of I don't want to say warned us about, but they, they told us about this. There will be games where Feyenoord in the first half would do very little or would at least kind of be waiting for the opposition to do something. And that's what happened with Liverpool against Bologna the other night, right? And then Slot would slightly tinker. He would change just one or two things. There'd be a tactical observation. There'd be a movement of a player. The other day, he called over Dominic Sobosly and he changed position. He made the sub last night of Diogo Jota, which obviously dropped Jota a little bit deeper in a different way to the way that Nunez drops deeper. And suddenly Liverpool have got one extra man in midfield. They're overloading in that area. The edge of the box is clear. They, they get a little bit deep. There's all these kind of very slight microcosm I, like it, within a game changes that actually massively change everything. And there's this story that I always go back to, right? And the story that I really like. There was an area in North America where wolves were running absolutely wild with uh, like just attacking people, attacking lots of animals, taking out livestock, all those kind of things. And there was a local set of people who were tasked with taking out these wolves, right? Stick with me. So the, they did and the wolves were completely eradicated from the area. Stick with me. It's not about wolves, the team. And they found that the overall influence on the area was in, in general, a negative one. The path of the river changed in terms of where the river was going. Different kinds of trees grew in the area. Different insects were now native to that area because of the way that the food chain was working within that area. And the reason I'm telling you this is because when you look at Liverpool, you look at the minor changes that they make to the movements out on the field, it changes the way the opposition treat them. It, the opposition also became quite aggressive last night. That's partly down to the new Champions League format, which definitely helped Liverpool. They definitely became a bit more uh, separated. There was a front line and a back line. They were quite deep and the front line was up there and it kind of spaced them out quite nicely for Liverpool to attack into. But you also saw the changes that Slot made, which made a big difference. And I feel Jota was a big one for this. But at the same time, Slot was not happy with the way that we retained the ball. And rightly so. Like, I, I think you know, winning second balls and having to play that long ball because of the surprise way that Bologna pressed and obviously them slowly becoming more and more aggressive was something we wanted to reduce. But when you're a manager who wants control, when you're a manager who wants to pass the opposition to death, I get it, Like he's got these tactical tweaks, but he doesn't want to have to be making these tactical tweaks during the game. He wants plan A or the players to solve those things during the match. And a huge part of this is going to be Liverpool's players learning those things. So whilst we're talking about being happy with the eye test of Ryan Gravenberch, a great player, someone who played really well last night, had some really nice runs, had some great moments, and the same with Alexis McAllister, and the same with uh, Soboslai in winning those second balls, in winning so many of those presses, that's great. But I think he will also see a system that he feels, if we can analyse it like that, then it's probably too obvious for even the opposition. If football fans can sit there and go, oh, we shouldn't be doing this, we should be doing this, the opposition will also be doing that and be able to make their own adjustments. And he'll know that in the coming weeks, these are Liverpool's fixtures. Obviously, they've got Crystal Palace before the international break, but you've got Chelsea, followed by Leipzig, followed by Arsenal, Brighton, Brighton, Leverkusen, Villa, Southampton, 
the Southampton game is just three days before uh, the Liverpool at home to Real Madrid game, followed by Man City on December the 1st, followed by Newcastle on December the 4th, followed by Everton on December the 7th, followed by Girona on the 10th. He spoke about this in the press conference. And then obviously Leicester City at home immediately after that, right? Uh, sorry, Fulham after that. Spurs, Leicester, West Ham. He spoke about this in the press conference. Manchester United on the 4th of January. I'm, you know, I don't even want to pick out what games I think are easy within there. There's plenty of travel in there. There's plenty of big, challenging sides. How many of those are at Anfield? Like, Arsenal is away. Leipzig is away. Chelsea is at Anfield. That's a real test for Liverpool. Will they be able to match up Maresca tactically? I, idealize, well, ideally, like, how are they going to do it? What's the ideal way of matching up Maresca? Mar Chelsea... Just a couple of points behind Liverpool at the moment, probably looking up at Liverpool and thinking, well, look, City are going to finish above them. Arsenal are probably going to finish above them. That's what their perception will be. Where are we likely to finish? You know, are we in relation to Liverpool? If we can put down this marker of beating Liverpool, what is it going to do for the egos within the team? How are Liverpool going to be able to counteract that back line? Because we saw that the press for Liverpool actually wasn't that effective last night. We saw Slot was disappointed with that. He was talking about, there was all these kind of motions and the intensity, the dialing in kind of thing. And that was frustrating. I think sometimes maybe Liverpool can underestimate the lower uh, band of opposition where they're seen as like slightly below Liverpool. Seemed to happen against Forest, seemed to happen against Bologna. To an extent, I think it happened against Wolves. They look slightly too relaxed. I know that they don't want to overexert themselves in games where they probably shouldn't need to. And realistically, Liverpool didn't move through the gears last night. But also, there's like a there's an element that Slot has to balance here of momentum and keeping something in the tank, essentially. We know this from previous Klopp uh, seasons. We know this from pre previous Slot seasons. He's won best manager of the Air Divisi two seasons. We know that he is good at, pay, or at least he should be good at pacing these uh, seasons out. And he's already said it himself. He's already admitted it himself. We've not beaten anyone of any great quality so far. We've not beaten anyone who's really put Liverpool to the sword. And we haven't beaten Forrest. Five wins in a row, fantastic. Eight wins out of nine, fantastic. But there are gonna be some stumbling blocks and some frustrations during the season. But when there's Four days, uh, three days between Chelsea and Leipzig, four days between Leipzig and Arsenal, three days between Arsenal and Brighton, then two, two days, three days between Brighton again, Leverkusen then three days later, four days to Villa, then there's a, a break, but I imagine that's because of the FA Cup. Uh, or a cup weekend. Then there is a uh, three days between Southampton and uh, Real Madrid. Four days until uh, City. Three days until Newcastle. These are times where they're not going to get to coach the team as much. They'll be learning on the fly. They'll be learning where those players need to be. And there are certain players who are going to be taking a lot of feedback. A lot of... I'd imagine that in that time, Van Dijk and Canate are going to be taking a lot of feedback. It's going to be interesting to see how Liverpool approach that, how Anfield approaches that, how the team approach that. Within that time, they're going to play Leverkusen at home, Real Madrid at home. And the overall estimation is at the moment, you're only really like 14 points. You don't make it into the automatic top eight. 16 points will get you safely into that top eight. So Liverpool are going to need to be beating the Leverkusens and the Real Madrids in order to ensure those places. And I'd imagine that what ideally you want to do is beat those sides sooner rather than later. So that when you come back and you have to play Lille, who, guess what, did a good number against uh, Real Madrid last night. You'll be like, OK, we've already got some points in the bag. We'll see how that goes. I'd imagine he's very cognizant of this. He knows this. He knows all the people who are adulating them, pouring praise on them at the moment with the same people who are saying, were they prepared? You know, is he tactically the right guy? And probably the same pressure that will have gone on Eric Ten Hag, will have gone on managers like Maresca earlier this season they had to ride through, will begin to build on people like Arne Slot if they don't get the results that people expect them to get after that momentum driving early couple of weeks. I'm talking about narrative here, not necessarily talking about tactics. Tactics wise, I think we definitely were weak in the press last night. It's great that Liverpool could exploit some of the gaps that they saw against Bologna, but realistically the gaps that we see against Bologna, they're not the same gaps that we're gonna see against Chelsea or Arsenal or 
any of those sides that I've listed before. Even playing Leipzig, I mean, you know, let's talk about Leipzig for a second. Leipzig, in terms of the way they play, they lost to Juve very narrowly last night, and they'll be disappointed with the result overall. But, you know, the week before that, they were losing to Atletico Madrid. They're narrowly losing these games. They're playing big, again, energy-sapping games. This, these are sides that we don't want to have to come up against because it's not about win or lose in those games. It is, obviously, but it's also about the energy that you have to exert to beat those sides and the quality that you have to show. Mo Salah stepped up last night and obviously had another great goal, but it wasn't a great moment of quality. It was actually just something we would expect from Mo Salah. And I get that. Like, I'll talk about that in a second. Especially when it comes down to it for Liverpool, I think we've not really we've seen moments and bursts of quality, but sustained quality is what we're looking for in this side. And I think sometimes we underestimate the Klopp here in terms of the sustaining of high quality and high um, standards. But what we're also now taking for granted is Allison, Trent, Verge, and Salah, and to an extent, one or two of those midfielders are performing to a very high level week in, week out. I spoke about the leadership group and how McAllister had joined that last night. I think that's important to note here. Like Liverpool are trying to widen the amount of players who are immediately responsible for these wins and can be held responsible so that they take on more responsibility at the club. But also we take for granted that Mo Salah has an even better record in the Champions League than Ian Rush. He is the greatest and most prolific scorer of goals in the Champions League and now Europe for Liverpool. Like, all of these things are taken for granted. Alisson didn't particularly have to do all that much last night, but certainly had to perform and will be needed to perform at a high level after this. The same for Virgil van Dijk. He makes it look very easy, but actually, you know, when we saw their number nine come on last night, I think what we've seen in a couple of these games and what we definitely know um, someone like Slot is very aware of are these individuals who seem to be able to pick Liverpool off at times and frustrate us like Callum Hudson-Odoi came on we didn't quite know what to do then we had to adjust in those minutes we saw their striker last night come on what were we doing in those minutes he had a little bit of the run of the game for a while he was able to get a couple of the balls out there we were surprised a bit by the strength that he had those kind of things are the things that I think he will be very explicitly aware of and we probably need to be aware of as fans as well because that's going to change how we need to support the side let me know what you guys think in the comments below and what you think of Arne Slot's honest evaluation. I don't think it means he's angry or frustrated or underserved. I just think it means that we need to be aware of where this team is at actually in, re in real time rather than, you know, trying to say are they title contenders, like I said in my title contender video. Appreciate you guys' feedback. There's a Patreon down there. There's obviously also a Discord. Get in it and I'll see you guys in there. Much love. Bye.